Up at Unicorn here with a message for all my little black girls who are between 13 and 21. I know that's not necessarily little, like little, little, like in school little, but you know, I'm an auntie, so for me, you know, maybe I should say young girls or young women, right? So here's the deal. Welcome to the planet. Welcome to the planet. <laughs> okay, that's a song you might not know because I'm a millennial and you're not. So perhaps you are a centennial. A centennial is basically, you know, 13 and up pretty much. Um, not a millennial, not a zennial. Well, actually, zennials might qualify. Anyhow, I'll do a video on that. So this is just a message to you to say, one, I love you, two, I'm so proud of you, your creativity, your resilience, your will to be unique and different despite all the people from TikTok to wherever there is social media who copy you and do not credit you um, my heart goes out to you for that and welcome to the struggle this is this is what it's been for all of us that came before you but um, you have the privilege of being a techno technological native so what that means is like us who were born in the 80s and whatnot you know we had to learn <laughs> how to use the internet how to use you know these different phones and whatnot and you guys were just kind of born with iPads in your faces which is great because all of this is very intuitive for you and I hope that you are able to use that to fight against your own oppression and that which does not honor you. I would say as an auntie, right, your biggest battle is going to be in most likely in the field of medical health. I know you, you, you may or may not know this by now when you're between the ages of 13 and 21, but honey, these hospitals are to us what some people believe the police are to black men, okay? And um, that's not the happiest thing to think about, but you're so young and so smart and just so capable from a very young age even as you were able to play with dolls you just were also to navigate our phones and tablets and things like this and protest for us especially as women as black women is moving out of the streets and on to uh well onto the internet onto social media onto uh all things that are accessible at, at your fingertips really we, you're basically next in line for giving birth to Gen Alpha or the next generation after that. So um, I know this is a conversation that is, uh, you're, you're very young for this, but um, it's not safe for our babies or our mothers out here. And this is something that you're going to need to organize yourselves against so that it's better for you than it was for aunties like me in terms of childbearing and going to the hospital, experiencing pregnancy at the hands of people who are willing to commit the worst form of medical malpractice and medical neglect on you as a black woman when you become a black woman. All right, this is, again, my girls, 18 to, I mean, excuse me, 13 to 21. So, it's a public health crisis that we're dealing with in terms of uh, systemic racism in hospitals. And it's something, it has been very hard for us to calculate and quantify and tell people, hey, you know, there are so many news articles that you'll come across and it says, hey, childbirth is bad for black women. No, it's not. The doctors involved in our childbirth, that's what's bad for black women. Or it'll say, hey, getting pregnant for black women results in, results in death and mortality rate. And it's like, no, the way you handle us, the way you treat us. Beyonce and Serena Williams have a very similar experience to myself. Now, my child, he he didn't live, but Beyonce and Serena, their children did live. We all had preeclampsia. And if you're an African-American woman dealing with your very first pregnancy, then you will most likely deal with some form of preeclampsia. Now, there's about, you know, nine different diagnostic criteria to determine whether or not you have it, but most of us end up with some kind of a risk for hypertension or toxemia. And our very first pregnancy, and sometimes we like to tell doctors like, hey, something's going on, I feel weird, and they love to talk us out of it. Oh no, you must just be responding to the epidural. Oh no, you must just be responding to some other medication. Oh, you don't know, I know you're nervous, it's just your first time. And it's like, no, ouch, nurse. 
I need someone here with me. What I would tell you, sorry, that's my mama. And I'll just go on ahead and turn my phone down so I can, um, there we are. You're right. Uh, you need someone to advocate for you. When you are giving birth, whether you get a doula or something else, or if you just have an auntie that's a nurse, you are going to need that person to advocate for you while you are in delivery and also at some of your different appointments. I remember going to a doctor and I had all of the diagnosis. I fulfilled every last sign of the diagnostic criteria for uh, preeclampsia and they still did not diagnose me with it. And well, my son is dead today as a result. Now, this is not supposed to depress you. This is actually supposed to be good news because the power is in your hands. The power is literally, literally in your hands, in your phones, in your tablets, in your laptops, in your keyboards. I mean, really get together, organize, organize yourselves and demand healthcare that suits you. I know that you can demand as much as legislation to the point where you demand that people hear it. There's something called a Harvard Implicit Biases Test. I want you to Google that. Harvard Implicit Bias. So with the Harvard Implicit Biases Test, you have this wonderful tool that helps you to discover if you are racist or not, if you are anti-black, anti-white, anti-Muslim, anti-Asian, anti-gay. And, you know, Harvard is very creative. And what it has done is, like, you basically respond really, really quickly. And, I mean, if you take one second too long, literally, if you take two seconds to respond to a question, the entire test is nullified because you took too long. It's trying to get at your subconscious. So you must answer very quickly. And it's a beautiful, beautiful thing. And I would say having something like that mandatory for people who want to work with black women, because I had so many people in my classroom at home now. I got to college. I went to college way back in 2003, okay? So when I got to college, this was a thing. Even before I got there, we were all taking these implicit biases tests. And most people, including black people, were testing, you know, they had some kind of an anti-black bias. And that's really important because often Oftentimes we go to the dentist and we don't understand why, you know, getting our teeth removed didn't happen for us the way it happened for Sally or why, you know, getting that shot didn't work out for us the way it worked out for Becky. And turns out, you know, people have a problem. You've got all these, you know, black babies that are dying of SIDS and maybe the doctor handled them too rough and did something with their spinal cord that they don't do with white babies. I mean, I know this sounds very depressing, but I mean... Right now, you're not a mother. Right now, you're not pregnant. Right now, you're not going through those things. And even if you are, I would say congratulations. I have a very um, controversial view when it comes to teen pregnancy. While I don't promote it, it is, it is a matter of national fact that black women are having much healthier babies and much healthier pregnancies in their teens than they are in their 20s and 30s. And a Jewish doctor that I can, I'm going to fail to mention at the moment said it's because of racism and all the things that we internalize in our bodies and bones that baby has zero protection from. So everything you feel, everything you go through, your baby has no barrier when you're pregnant has no barrier from you and what you feel. So that's definitely something to take into account as a young person, as a young black person who is also a young black woman. Um, I know there are um, so many things coming at you and so many ideas and you're so young with, you know, transgender, this and that, uh, liberal versus conservative politics, this and that, where to go for, you know, college, whether to go to an e uh, HBCU or a PWI, that would be historically black college or a predominantly white institution. There are so many things to think about with your beautiful rainbow generation selves, but I just want to say that healthcare, healthcare, our physical bodies, we are being terminated in these hospitals by neglect, by neglect. And you have the right to react very angry, angrily to that. But more so, you, I would recommend that you organize yourselves because here's the deal with us millennials and, and Gen Xers and what else. Like, you know, we're so grown now and we're, you know, so caught up in, you know, work, paying the bills. You know, you have the available time right now to protest. You have the available time right now to go to town hall meetings consistently. You have the available time to you to go to your state capital 
and push legislation right now. You have the time now between 13 and 21 to do those things. So to protect you from the future that I found myself in, um, I would recommend that you push with as much education and as much fervor as you can in the, in the direction of safer medical practices uh, for African-American women, uh, black women in general, but African-American women in specific because we are having the weakest babies and the highest maternity, um, well, matricide basically, um, death. And the reason I brought up Beyonce and Serena is because Serena Williams went through what I went through and she got up and told a nurse, she literally was in labor and she got up off of her back, off of her bed and she said to a nurse, you know, I feel like I'm having a blood clot. And the nurse said to that millionaire, Serena Williams, the GOAT, the greatest of all time, a celeb celebrity, mm, I'm sure you're just uh, delusional, you're reacting to the medicine in some kind of way, you don't know, you go lay down, it's going to be all right. She didn't take her pain seriously because so many people, including medical professionals, they believe in their heart of hearts that African Americans can handle a greater amount of pain than can other races. And that's just simply not true. So Serena Williams advocated for herself saying, ma'am, I have had a blood clot before and I am telling you that I feel the same way and you need to do something now and as a millionaire as a celebrity she got those people to act and you know what Serena was experiencing multiple blood clots that could have killed her and her child indeed it was a blood clot that killed mine I couldn't advocate for myself I didn't know any better I was in my 20s yada 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 okay so um Serena was able to do that as an influential human being but so many of us you know were not and so what what uh, what happened with my baby sister is that her godmother is a nurse. So the whole time she was in labor, she had a literal family member who was a nurse to be able to advocate and knew what was going on in that room, and knew what what you know her niece was facing. Like she could tell, and she could, and and they couldn't slough in front of a fellow nurse. So that takes me back to advocacy, and I mean it could just be advocacy, you know, with 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 you know, gynecology or, you know, checkups, things like this, wherever you can have an advocate, wherever you can push legislation to keep you safe, considering all the statistics out there that are saying that there are these certain things that affect African American women more so than any other group of women. And when I say that, honey, this, the, the results are in, in terms of, um, how do I say this? And I have some light jokes going on across the screen because I want to, you know, lighten the blow in as much as I can. Um, a white woman who is addicted to meth is more likely to have a baby that lives and survive her pregnancy than a healthy African American woman who has never touched drugs or alcohol in her life who's a lawyer. A rich or poor Mexican is more likely to have a healthy baby than a rich or poor on drug or off drug. Like it just, there's something going on specifically with us. And one Jewish doctor said, this is racism. This is the effect of racism on these women's bodies. It's killing them from the inside and everything inside of them, including their children. So there, there is so much to learn. And unfortunately you are inheriting you're inheriting a world that takes from you and neglects, and neglects you at the same time. And um, some of us older generations, we have failed you in that we haven't achieved enough for your protection, but now that you're competent and knowledgeable between 13 and 21 and you're available to involve yourself in these causes, I invite you to remove yourself from the causes of others and to fight your own cause and to give yourself all of your energy because you will be tapped out. You will be tired of taking buses to the nation's capital and drawing up all your protest signs and going to different community centers to have uh, you know, community organizing meetings. I would invite you to divest temporarily 
from whatever other causes you're involved in that, that are truly worthy causes, truly worthy, whether it is, you know, stop the Muslim ban, stop Asian hate, LGBTQ, like truly worthy causes, and pick up the mantle of your own cause and invest yourself, mind, body, and soul in how hospitals are failing black mothers because you are the future black mother. And we don't want the failures that happened in my life to happen in yours. So again, there's more than that. You know, they're, they're, they're the way the medical system is failing us. I mean, we could talk about diabetes. We could talk about kidney transplants and how they literally adjust for whether or not you're an African American when they're testing you for those things. Whoa, right? Amazing. But this is this 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 is medicine in America. This is the reality. So I would ask you to. Um, Engage yourself in a fight for yourself. And know that we're, we're not leaving you alone. We're still fighting with you. But also there are things that you know and are capable of that, that we are not. Burn bright like the sun. Shine bright like a diamond. I'm your auntie, Afri Unicorn. And I love you and wish you well. Happy in a mouth.